Hi everyone, I'm YGJ and today is the 13th of November 2022 and welcome to the official opening of the Thomson East Coast Line Stage 3, or Tel 3. We're currently at Stevens Station which is the first station along Tel 3. We wanted to do this video on Friday the 11th of November uh, which was the preview day but it was a weekday and we had work. LTA, why do you put this on a weekday? Anyway, uh, we, we were planning to do to dash to each station to make the video but in the end we decided to film it today as we wanted it to be a comprehensive and informative video instead of a rushed one. So on Friday we just decided to scout the new stations to plan out how we wanted to film the video. Anyway, before I start, uh, I spent a ton of effort researching every station and every little detail of the line. So I know you probably heard this a million times but uh, genuinely, if you enjoy the video to the end, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this uh, video. Anyway, enough of the intro. So since we're starting at Steve, uh, Stevens Station, we're going to work our way down to Gardens by the Bay Station. So join me along as we explore all of the 11 new stations on the Tel Stage 3. So, in this video, aside from bringing you to all of the 11 new stations, I'm also going to share some fun facts about the line and how it was constructed, as well as some travel tips for commuters and the landmarks you can find at each station. Okay, so here's the exit map of Stevens Station. There are five exits, and the nearby landmark, uh, landmarks include the Tangling uh, Community Club, there's also the Raffles Town Club, St. Joseph's Institution over here, Singapore Chinese Girls School, and Malcolm Park. Yeah, so there's a lot of condominiums in the uh, area as this is like a very high-end or like atas part of Singapore. And speaking of schools, let's go see an artwork right here at Stevens Station that was inspired by the schools in the vicinity. Along the way to the Thompson East Coast Line, you'll pass by an artwork titled A Syllabus for Stevens, which has bookshelves featuring book titles with subjects that quote Students wish they could study in schools. Now, the artwork behind me is part of a program by LTA called Art in Transit. And this program is a public showcase of artworks made by local artists that are integrated into the design of MRT stations. I think this is a great initiative uh, and artwork just like this helps to spruce up and add a little bit of uniqueness to each station. And I believe it makes our daily commute a little less mundane. We'll be seeing more of this as we go down the line, so stay tuned. Hmm, I like this book. <laughs> Coming down these long escalators onto the uh, platforms, it's no surprise that Stevens Station is one of the deeper stations on the Tel Tree. The station is about 35 meters below the surface, roughly the height of an 11-story building. Now, Stevens Station is particularly interesting because of its station layout. The downtown line platforms are stacked platforms, which means that one platform is on top of the other. And what they did here is that they built the Thomson East Coast Line tracks to go in between the downtown line tracks. So what this means is that uh, there are actually two ways to get to the downtown line, and it depends on which direction you're heading towards. If you're heading towards uh, Expo or the downtown area, you need to uh, go up those escalators that I just came down from and if you're heading towards uh, Bukit Panjang, you need to go down those escalators over there. And this also means that if you tap in at the wrong platform, uh, wrong downtown line platform at Stevens, you don't have to tap out anymore. You can just go over to the Thompson East Coast Line platforms, then go up or down to the correct downtown line platform. Alright, our train is arriving soon, but before we get to the next stop, Notice that the train arrival display now shows the passenger load on the train. It's a new feature that we've only ever seen on the downtown line, and it shows the crowdedness of each train in colour codes. Green is relatively empty, yellow is rather crowded, and red is when you realise you probably should have taken a day off. <laughs> Alright, let's go to our next station, Napier. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Napier. Here's a little fun fact to start off. 
I was technically wrong when I said Stephen Station is the first station of the Tel Tree because there's an unopened station, Mount Pleasant, that is up one station from here. It's going to open in the future once housing developments take place. I'm doing the clapping thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, just now back at Stephen Station, we were kind of like stopped by the security guard because uh, we, were, we apparently weren't allowed to like film inside the station. So, uh, but he said it was okay to film like short sections of videos and uh, of the station. So, uh, that's why I will, I'm here at Marina Barrage and the rest of this video will be kind of me like uh, doing a voiceover of the video. So, uh, at the Napier Station, it's like a stack platform uh, configuration just like the downtown line platforms uh, back at Napier. Eh, no, back at Stevens, sorry. <laughs> and so, thankfully the designers of the Tel Stage 3 made a design feature you probably didn't know about. All of the upper level platforms uh, go towards Gardens by the Bay and all the lower platforms go towards uh, uh, Woodlands North. So if you're going south, go up and if you're going down, uh, if you're going north, go down. Yeah, it's pretty confusing and anyway, you can just look at the signs at the station to show you which direction uh, to go to. Yeah, so that's a uh, travel tip for you. And I must say the ceiling uh, design at Napier was really beautiful. And throughout the station, there was also artwork featuring botanical flowers like orchids, legumes and gingers. Uh, a design that uh, is inspired by nature and meant to represent the botanic gardens nearby. And at the exits, you'll also find green walls uh, containing plants which not only contributes to the aesthetic of the station, but also uh, produces some fresh air as you enter or exit the station. And uh, speaking of the design of the station, here's a fun fact about Napier Station. The entire station, uh, which includes its architecture, structure and road alignment, uh, was entirely designed by the Land Transport Authority. And uh, those drawings of botanical flowers that you saw just now uh, were done as a collaboration between LTA and the National Parks Board. So, no offence to SMRT and SBS Transit, but y'all might need to step up uh, your game in the design of your stations. And on a side note, I think the roof design uh, really looks similar to the roof design at Abbey Wood Station on the Elizabeth Line in London. So, uh, do you think it looks similar? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, so anyway, do you notice another thing about uh, this space? It feels very uh, spacious, right? So another design of Napier Station is the lack of support pillars. The architects managed to design this space such that the weight of the ceiling could be supported by the walls giving us this beautiful and spacious space. And another fun fact about the construction of Napier Station, during the construction, they had to blast out the rocks in the ground uh, to clear out the space needed for the station. And because Glen Eagles Hospital is located right next to the station, they only had a five minute window to perform the blasting uh, so as not to affect MRI operations in the hospital. So <laughs> imagine being a patient at the Glen Eagles Hospital and being told that you're MRI operation had to be delayed by a few minutes because some bombs were going off nearby. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, since I mentioned the botanic gardens, let me talk about the nearby places you can find at Napier Station. So, Napier Station is located near the Tangling Gate of the Botanic Gardens, which is the first and only UNESCO World Heritage Site here in Singapore. But other than the Botanic Gardens, Napier Station is also located near the Glen Eagles Hospital, Interpol uh, Global Comple Complex for Innovation, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, and coincidentally with that, several embassies like the Australian High Commission, British High Co Commission and the United States Embassy. Just listening all these embassies makes me feel like Mr. International. Anyway, it's time to head to our next station, Orchard Boulevard. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Orchard Boulevard. So, we went to Orchard Boulevard station and here's a little trivia for you. Which station along the Tel Stage 3 has the longest name? Most people would probably think of Gardens by the Bay. But uh, if you just count by the letters, excluding the spaces, Orchard Boulevard is actually longer at 16 uh, letters uh, compared to 15 letters for Gardens by the Bay. However, another upcoming station, Founders Memorial, uh, also has 16 letters. Uh, and if you count the spaces and that little quotation mark, it yeah, has the same length as Gard uh, Gardens by the Bay at 18 characters. But again, another however, when the Thompson East Coast Line is extended to Tanah Merah, uh, Changi Airport Terminal 5 will take the title with uh, 25 characters. 
Anyway, some places you can find around Orchard Boulevard Station include Tanglin Mall, Camden Medical Center, the Singapore Tourism Board, uh, and several hotels like Gen Tanglin Hotel, Regent Singapore Hotel, and the St. Regis, St. Regis Singapore Hotel. I, I do apologize if I pronounce the names of those places wrongly. Now, the design of Orchard Boulevard Station uh, is based on a classy yet simple design. And a very unique part of this station is the artwork called Pulse, with uh, these huge factory pipes and an opening that looks like a tube bar. It's meant to represent the human circula circulatory system and with our urban transport system, with the pipes representing our arteries and veins pumping blood throughout our body. I think this looks really creepy though. Uh, it really gives off uh, liminal space pipes. Imagine if you are alone in this place and like creepy music starts playing. <laughs> yeah. So, there's also these skylights over here, which bring in natural light into the station, uh, which reduces the need for lights to light up the station, saving electricity. And what I love about these particular skylights is that uh, they are knee level, so you can see right into the station below. Although when I filmed it, it was raining, so it was a bit hard to see the station inside. But uh, here's another clip with the interior of the station looking at the skylights. Anyway, if you look at the, uh, those trees that are just across the road, uh, those are heritage trees which can't be cut down. So when they were designing Orchard Boulevard Station, they had to build the station around these trees so as not to affect them. I think that was also a good decision because those trees also uh, provide some shade as you walk towards the traffic light. Alright, let's go to our next station, Orchard. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Orchard. Change at the next station for the North-South Line. Now, if you've been following social media or forums regarding the MRT network, you'll see quite a number of people claiming that Orchard will uh, now hold the title of the most number of exits on the MRT network, taking away the title from Raffles Place, which has 10 exits. And as of the recording of this video, several websites like Land Transport Guru uh, Wikipedia and even some mapping websites like OneMap and uh, StreetDirectory.com uh, show that Raffles Place Station has 10 exits from A to J. However, if you go to Raffles Place Station, you'll see that the exit signs actually show an additional 3 exits, K, L and M. Uh, so Raffles Place MRT Station actually has 13 exits. So today I have debunked that myth and while there is some truth in that Orchard Station has the most number of exits, it actually shares the title with Raffles Place Station. Which is also why if you've been observing and digging through all of LTA's public information about Orchard Station, uh, you never see the, any mention of Orchard Station taking over Raffles Place Station as the, as the station with the most exits. Now, as you can see, the design of Orchard Station is very exquisite looking. Its ceiling has been fitted with mirrors, uh, which are like glittering diamonds. And it's no surprise since uh, Orchard is a famous luxury shopping district in Singapore. Meanwhile, the reddish design around the station pays homage to the North-South Line, which has been serving Orchard for the past 35 years, and interchanges with the Th uh, Thompson East Coast Line at this station. Coming out of the fair gates and along this walkway, we can see a stretch of images depicting the busy Orchard streets at night. This art in transit piece is called Scott's Road slash Orchard Road from Ion Sky. And speaking of Ion Sky, do you know that if you spend $50 at Ion Orchard Shopping Centre, you can get free entry into the Ion Sky Observation Deck, which is located at the 56th floor and boasts spectacular views of the Singapore skyline. Unfortunately, there isn't really anything we want to buy at Ion Orchard, so I do apologize if you were expecting to see some cool shots of Ion Sky. So, on that disappointment, it's time to head to our next station, Great World. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Great World, Da Shi Jie. So, we are now at Great World Station and coming out of the concourse area, we can see that the station has a huge blue panel that gives off a nautical feel. To me, it uh, looks really similar to Stadium Station on the Circle Line. And with the opening of Great World Station, you now get easier access to places such as Great World City Shopping Center, River Valley Primary School, Kim Seng Park, and Zion Riverside Food Centre. Speaking of Great World City, uh, Great World Station gets its name from the Great World Shopping Centre, uh, right next to it, which in turn was named after an amusement park uh, that existed a long time ago called Great World Amusement Park. Back in its heyday, uh, it was a busing place with food stalls, amusement park rides, and entertainment such as performances and films. I obviously don't have any memories of Great World Amusement Park, 
but I believe the older generation will have many fond memories of it. And I think LTA did an uh, incredible job capturing what this place uh, was like back in the day, with yet another eye transit piece, Great World, Great Times, which looks like a giant newspaper showcasing various activities and events that happened throughout the uh, course of the park's history. There are also posters uh, showing wrestlers and Chinese opera performers. Anyway, coming back to the modern day, the construction of Great Wall Station came along with its own set of challenges, particularly the Kim Seng underpass, which connects the main station to exits 2 and 3, that lead to Great Wall City and Kim Seng Road respectively. Originally, this underpass was planned to be dug out using a boring method, but due to engineers finding multiple steel plates and beams underground, uh, they had to use a cut and cover method, in which they had to excavate a trench from the surface, and then cover the top with a concrete slab so that they, the work can continue below. As a result of this, uh, Exit 2 and 3 will have a delayed opening along with Exit 5. Exit 2 to Great Wall City will likely uh, open in end of 2022. Exit 5 along River Valley Road will likely open by quarter 1 of 2023. And Exit 3 along Kim Seng Road will likely open in end 2023 or early 2024. Do note that these are estimates and LTA hasn't announced the official dates that these exits will open. Also, here's another trivia for you. There's another station with World in the name. Do you know what uh, station is called? Yep, it's Beauty World Station along the downtown line. So, don't get confused between the two because if you do, you might end up in another world. <laughs> anyway, let's go to our next station, Havelock. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Havelock. Havelock Station is located in the vicinity of the Concord Shopping Centre, Tambun Liap Building, Gyok Hong Tian Temple, several HDB estates, and again, several hotels like Holiday Inn, Grand Copton Waterfront, Furama Riverfront, and Four Points. At Havelock Station, in order to minimise disruption to residents and traffic around the area, the engineers of the Tel Tree, for the first time ever, use a Rectangular Tunnel Boring Machine or RTBM. And I personally find this really interesting because usually when you think of a tunnel boring machine, you picture a circular machine that digs through a circular tube through the ground. So I, I was uh, quite surprised when I heard that a Rectangular Tunnel Boring Machine was used to dig out the pedestrian underpass here. So here's a screenshot from an animation by LTA about how the RTBM looks like. And if you want to see how they uh, assemble and use it to dig out the pedestrian tunnel at Havelock Station, uh, click the card that just popped up in the right, uh, top right hand corner of your screen. Anyway, along this underpass, you can also see some art that looks like sketchings on the walls. It kind of reminds me of those uh, ancient Egyptian wall art. And if you look closely at these artworks, you can see that these artworks contain things like uh, structural designs and maps. And this is a throwback to Singapore's town planning process decades ago back when buildings were designed on pencil and paper. Since there's nothing much uh, to talk about at <laughs> Lock, I mean, there's not even a locksmith anywhere, anywhere near here. Uh, let me talk about some of the accessibility features that they included in the Thompson East Coast Line. So firstly, all of the interchange stations on the Thompson East Coast Line come with family-friendly uh, washrooms, which include hot water dis uh, dispensers and diaper changing stations. Secondly, all the stations uh, along the Thompson East Coast Line come with at least two lifts from the platform to the concourse. And that's useful because uh, if any one of the lifts is unavailable... Uh, oh, there's a wedding shirt over there. <laughs> anyway, continuing from just now, the two lifts from the platform to the concourse at each station is useful because if any one of the lifts is unavailable due to a breakdown or maintenance, you still have the other lift which is still available. Thirdly, at staircases, the handrails are fitted with braille and embossed stacks, which helps people who are visually handicapped to navigate the station. And there's also lights integrated into the handrails, which provide better visibility of the steps, which, as a bonus, makes for a really nice Instagram photo backdrop. Finally, at the platforms, the seats are designed with a backrest and armrest for elderly commuters. And some of you may think, well, why not have the backrest for the entire seat? I actually had this question for quite a while but now that I think of it, if you are a worker or a student carrying a bag on your back, <laughs> a pun, <laughs> yeah, having no backrest means that you don't have to sit very uncomfortably forward or put your back down in order to sit comfortably. 
Okay, let's head to our next station, Utram Park. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Utram Park. Nanyuan. Change at the next station for the East West Line or North East Line. Now, let me share an impressive engineering feat that the engineers of the Tel Tree have achieved in this portion of the line. In the stretch that we just passed through between Havelock and Utram Park stations, the Tel tunnels uh, had to be dug underneath the existing East West Line tunnels. And along a 365 meter stretch of the line, the Tel tunnels were as close as 1.8 meters uh, from the East West Line tunnels. So imagine uh, roughly here, I don't know, 1.8 meters is roughly about this height. And that's the height between the tunnels. And if you thought that alone was impressive, the digging of these tunnels was done while trains were actively running on, uh, on the east-west line. I cannot imagine the pressure that the engineers of the Tel Tree had to face while doing this portion of the line, knowing that any mistakes could cost the lives of hundreds of people in the trains running above. Oh, and by the way, if you're curious uh, where, I, where I got all this uh, construction information from, check out this article from the Straits Times which covers uh, some of the engineering challenges faced during the construction of the line. I've, link, I've linked it in the description. Now, with the opening of the Thompson East Coast Line Phase 3, there are now two new three-line interchange uh, stations, Utram Park being one of them and the other one being Marina Bay. And if you love uh, massive interchange hubs like the one at Dobie Gott, well, you now got two massive interchanges now. But for other commuters, navigating a huge interchange station like this can be really confusing. As such, they made the, uh, this transfer map that is supposed to guide you to which escalators to go to to your line. Uh, but I've seen this map over five times and I still don't understand it. Uh, maybe it's just me, but I prefer those like 3D style station layouts as I find them easier to understand. Also look at the sign over here. Do you notice a super minor detail about the transfer sign? If you look at the east-west line symbol here, you can see that it has the sign. Uh, it has the letters E, W, and L. But if you go to Marina Bay Station and look at some of the uh, transfer signs, let me pull out an image here. Uh, the lines don't have the L in the sign. Now, coming up to the escalators uh, onto the concourse, we can see a beautiful mural, mural containing many sketchings that depict everyday objects and places uh, that can be found around the area. And do you notice that the colours and design of the station give off a very warm and comfortable ambience? If you compare it to the rest of the station where the east-west line and north-east lines are, those parts feel very uh, white and sterile, uh, which kind of represents the Singapore General Hospital nearby. And I love this design here because it helps you to like relax in what might be a stressful experience going to the hospital. Along the transfer walkways to the different lines, there's also these color-coded uh, color strips which point you to the lines uh, that you want to go to, which should help with the confusion of looking at the transfer map just now. So around Utram Park Station, there's obviously the Singapore General Hospital and various other healthcare facilities. Police Cantonment Complex, uh, Dorset Singapore Hotel, Neil Road Park and Duxton Plain Park, which I visited in a previous video, and there's also the Pearls Hill City Park and the Pinnacle at Duxton, and many different shop houses and cafes in the Duxton area. I don't have any uh, doctor's appointments, so let's head to our next station, Maxwell. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Maxwell. Now, for those familiar with the Maxwell area, you know that Maxwell is famous for the Buddha Tooth uh, Relic Temple and of course, Maxwell Food Centre. And for a very long time now, this area has been significantly difficult to get to because it's right smack in the middle of four MRT stations. So, great news for those uh, wanting to go to Maxwell Food Centre for lunch. And not so great news for me because that means more people during the rush hour. There are also many shop houses in the area with cafes and atas dining. Uh, and it's also located near the Singapore City Gallery, which, by the way, is free of charge. So if you have absolutely nothing to do, why not check out this place out for an hour or two? Unfortunately, it's closed today, so <laughs> yeah, we don't have the chance to go there. Why is everything closed on Sunday? Oh, and also, here's another interesting design feature for the signs. Notice that the direction signs uh, now show the station codes instead of the usual like numbered terminus numbers, which nobody seems to use. Uh, I think this is a really good design feature because if you know the station code of the station you want to go to, 
for example, uh, Caldercourt Station, which has a station code of uh, TE9. Uh, you can look at the sign and go, uh, this direction goes from T18 to T1, and T9 is in this range, so this is the direction I need to go. So a really useful uh, feature and a great job to the designers who thought of this idea. Although I do feel it would be better if the text showing the terminals was bigger. Coming up to the concourse level, we can see that the walls of Maxwell Station have a bright shade of red. But unlike Orchard Station where the red symbolises the north-south line, the red colour here at Maxwell Station symbolises the Chinatown district that uh, this station is located in. Around the station, you can see various drawings which pay tribute to the Chinese culture, such as the, these Chinese characters decorated like a Mahjong Tao design with the name of Maxwell Station both in English and Chinese. And also drawings meant to represent the Maxwell Food Centre nearby, such as this uh, drawing of a child eating a meal in front of a double C, which in Mandarin uh, means happiness. These light bulbs were commonly seen in the old days during joyous occasions, and this drawing serves as a reminder of the past where people were less well off and struggled to make ends meet. And coming over to exit 2 of Maxwell Station, which brings you to the Maxwell Food Centre, you can see another art in transit piece, Ming Yi Si Wei Tian which is a Chinese idiom that literally means food is the necessity of the people, in English. These light bulbs were commonly seen in traditional food stalls uh, to in indicate that they were open. Okay, uh, we just had lunch so <laughs> we don't really need to go to the Maxwell Food Centre. So let's head to our next station, Shenton Way. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Shenton Way. This train service will end at Gardens by the Bay. So we're now at Shenton Way Station, which is another stack platform station. And let me share more about why this stretch of the Thompson East Coast Line has so many stack platforms. But before that, let's go see a very special escalator. Now, this is the longest escalator on the Thompson East Coast Line, which at 46 meters long, roughly takes 1 minute and 40 seconds to travel up which should give me more than enough time to explain the next segment about the construction of this station. So, as most of you already know, this stretch of the TEL goes through very densely packed urban areas, which include many buildings that make it impossible to make a regular island platform with tracks on each side, without having to demolish some of those buildings. So instead, the engineers decided to use a stack platform design, uh, which saves a lot of horizontal space, hence removing the need to demolish existing buildings. And because of this stack platform configuration, the TEL has some of the deeper stations in the entire MRT network, such as Stevens Station at 35 meters deep, and Shenton Way Station, where we, end, where we are now, at 38 meters deep, which is the deepest along the Thompson East Coast Line. Now, here's another impressive engineering feat that they achieved at Shenton Way Station. Before the station was built, an 8 meter wide stormwater canal ran through this area. Uh, so when they built the station, they had to construct a temporary diversion canal and along with it, some dams to divert stormwater around the construction site so that the station can be constructed. Coming up to the concourse level, we can see these beautiful art pieces showing old notes of our Singapore currency. There's a $1 note here, a $5 note there, and a $2 note somewhere else. And if you go to the ATMs in the station, uh, although the ATMs here haven't been installed yet, uh, you'll see artwork that looks like people queuing up for the ATMs. Shenton Way Station is located in the vicinity of Asia Square, the Western Singapore Hotel, Marina One Office and Residences, Shenton House, One Shenton, UIC Building, V on Shenton, SGX Centre, OUE Downtown, and of course, Lao Pasat. There are also direct underground connections to Asia Square, Marina One and the UIC Building which means you don't have to worry if you forgot your umbrella on a rainy day. Alright, let's head to our next station, Marina Bay. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Marina Bay. Bin Hai Wan. Change at the next station for the Circle Line or North-South Line. This train service will end at Gardens by the Bay. Now, during the construction of Marina Bay Station, engineers faced an issue. The Thompson East Coast Line tracks had to go underneath the North-South Line and Circle Line tracks. And the ground below those tunnels were hard, sandy and prone to water seepage, which made it, which made it hard to stabilise. 
As such, the engineers of the Tel Tree use a ground stabilizing method called ground freezing. And yes, as the name suggests, they literally inserted 96 freezing pipes into the ground and circulated a minus 30 degrees Celsius uh, salt water mixture to create a 1.8 meter thick ice wall about 40 meters underground. Uh, this strengthened the soil and allowed for the engineers to dig out the tunnels at Marina Bay. Coming out to the transfer level, we can see another art in transit title, Walking into the Interstital, which consists of uh, charcoal sketches of vaguely familiar spaces like a back alley, a bunch of stairs, and interiors of buildings. And according to the artist, these places are taken from the old financial district in Shenton Way, and they are meant to give off a surreal feel. I feel like the dark colours of these drawings give off an ominous feel though. It kind of reminds me of uh, everywhere at the end of time. Anyway, notice the yellow and red stripes on the walls, representing the circle and north-south lines. What a subtle but great design feature. And on this note, I find it really fascinating that this three-line massive interchange station is located pretty much in the middle of nowhere. The only nearby places are Marina 1 and Marina Bay Financial Centre, but those places are already served by Shenton Way and Downtown Stations respectively. And this makes uh, Marina Bay a very special station because most of the traffic here is made up of commuters transferring to another line to continue their journey. Now, navigating a huge interchange like Marina Bay may be confusing. In fact, the whole station has a floor area of 40,000 square meters. And in order to help commuters navigate the station, they made this giant map over here, showing the various levels of the station and what is located at each level, allowing for easier navigation in the station. Since we're at our last interchange station, let me talk about the transfer times at all of the interchange stations on the Tel Tree. I say I walk slightly faster than the average person, so you might want to add uh, 30 seconds to a minute depending on how fast you walk. At Stevens Station, it takes about 1.5 minutes to transfer between the Thompson East Coast Line and the Downtown Line towards Bukit Panjang, and about 2 minutes for the Downtown Line towards Expo. At Orchard Station, it takes about 1.5 minutes to transfer between the Thompson East Coast Line and the North South Line. At Utram Park Station, it takes about 2.5 minutes to transfer between the Thompson East Coast Line and the North East Line, and between the Thompson East Coast Line and East West Line, it takes about 1 minute. Finally, at Marina Bay Station, it takes about 4.5 minutes to transfer between the Thompson East Coast Line and North South Line, and 2.5 minutes between the Thompson East Coast Line and Circle Line. Alright, it's time to head to our final station, Gardens by the Bay. Please do not lean against the train doors. Next station, Gardens by the Bay. Bin Hai Wan Hua Yuan, Taman Di Persisiran, Karayora Pundo Tangal. This train service will end at Gardens by the Bay. Do you catch a minor detail in that announcement? Gardens by the Bay is the only station along the Thompson East Coast Line to have a unique Malay name, Taman Di Persisiran. The dynamic route map display in the trains also displays the Malay name. On the way to Gardens by the Bay, we pass by Marina South Station, another unopened station that will open once developments around the area take place. What's interesting is that, unlike other unopened stations in the MRT network like Bukit Brown, Hume and Tagore, Marina South is a fully built station and not a shell station, with the station interiors already constructed. So, we finally reached Gardens by the Bay Station and, as the name already suggests, it's located near the Gardens by the Bay. But with the opening of the Tel Tree, you get faster access to the eastern end of the gardens, which includes uh, places like Satay by the Bay and Marina Barrage. And as for the Flower Dome and Cloud Forest, it's a slightly shorter walk compared to Bayfront Station. So it depends on which line you are taking to go to Gardens by the Bay. If you are on the Circle or Downtown Line, you can get off at Bayfront Station and if you are on the Thompson East Coast Line, you can get off at Gardens by the Bay Station. Okay, so that's how I mentioned about uh, Gardens by the Bay being the only station along the TL to have a Malay name. And that brings me to the new MRT map. So let me open up to see what the changes are. So, you can see this is the, this is the new map and this is the old map. So let me put them down here. So, this is the old map, this is the new map. 
And one thing funny about the old map is that uh, you see the approximate walking time over here is that uh, the map style this one is the using the map style from uh, 2013 to 2019 uh, as you can see the the lines are like very straight and the circle is not a circle uh, while this one is the 2020 style and if you look at the new map uh, because gardens by the bay actually has a malay name which is the uh, taman di persisiran but if you look at the section over here mrt station with unique malay name uh, gardens by the bay actually doesn't appear there yeah so uh, I'm not sure if uh, this was a design mistake or the designer at LTA forgot to uh, put this in the map but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Gardens by the Bay is supposed to be uh, over here. So yeah, that's a, a interesting fact about the new MRT map. So yeah, fortunately I don't have any like older maps. Uh, I only just started collecting these maps and I dated them so yeah. Now, a super cool feature about Gardens by the Bay station is that this entire station is a civil defence shelter. And what happens uh, during an emergency is that people can enter through this door while the huge door over there will be closed. And the station is equipped with different facilities such as decontamination facilities and dry toilets. So uh, people can survive here while they are protected from any explosions or chemical attacks above. Walking along this underpass to the exits, you can see a very subtle form of art along the walls. These patterns along the walls look like shadows from the plants. And these shadows complement the skylights above where natural light comes in. And along the other side of the wall, you can see that uh, these panels showing the transformation of the Marina Bay shoreline over the years, which I think is really cool. And coming up to pretty much the star of the show, Exit 1 at Gardens by a Bay Station. There are large green walls on each side that are 8.35 meters tall and contain nearly 10,000 pots of plants. And looking up to the surface, we can see the beautiful yellow roof. And the neat feature about this roof is that these openings at the side actually allow for the sea breeze to flow into the station, allowing for natural ventilation. And with that, we have completed our journey through all of the 11 new stations on the Thomson East Coast Line. So to recap, we started from Stevens, then went to Napier, Orchard Boulevard, Orchard, Great World, Hathlock, Outram Park, Maxwell, Shenton Way, Marina Bay, and Gardens by the Bay. Phew, okay. Uh, let's walk to the Marina Barrage to finish off this video. Now, while this entire video has been showcasing the beautiful architecture and construction works behind each station, uh, I want to take a siding here, uh, pun intended, here uh, to talk about some important issues. I don't want to spoil the mood of this video so I'll keep it short and maybe I'll uh, make a separate video discussing these issues more in depth. But anyway, firstly, I think it's a real pity that the entire Thompson East Coast line is underground. The route of the TL goes through some really beautiful parts of the country such as the Central Catchment Area, uh, Central Business District and Gardens by the Bay. And it's really a pity that uh, you can only see this scenery and uh, these beautiful places only through a car or by taking the bus. And yes, the argument can, is going to be made about the environmental costs and all but aren't the same places being plagued by the roads and highways? Okay, maybe there's not much point arguing there since the line has pretty much been built. But uh, to my, on to my second point, it's just disappointing that uh, there has been quite little attention given to the feedback that many people have shared about the different issues along the line. And uh, some, of the issue, some of these points include escalators being slow, uh, not enough seats at stations, and tra trains being very loud when travelling through the tunnels, and lack of information on signage. And how do I know this? It's because I have attended not the, the discussion sessions organized by SMRT not just once but twice. That's how I have this uh, umbrella here which by the way looks uh, really nice. But anyway, back to my point. Uh, yes, there are some limitations to those uh, issues like for example the noise in the trains. Uh, but if we're going to give the excuse that like uh, slow escalators are meant to prevent the elderly from uh, falling when like you literally make announcements to tell them to use the lifts uh, or like you say that more seats will block passengers uh, when there's a, they need to evacuate in an emergency uh, when, when your station is like literally one of the biggest along the whole MRT network and yeah, it has half the number of seats it, does, it just doesn't make sense, right? So yeah, uh, to all the public transport operators here in Singapore please listen to the feedback of uh, your commuters as much as I love these umbrellas uh, I, I won't want them if uh, my feedback 
falls on deaf ears. Anyway, sorry that I had to add that towards the end of the video, but I think it's important to address these issues. Because not everything about the, uh, this line and MRT network is perfect. And it's important that we not only identify these issues, but also take actions to resolve them. And with that said, that's basically the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, thank you to my two cameramen, uh, Mike and Malcolm, who are helping me film this video, uh, who are not comfortable with appearing on camera, so you won't see them here. Uh, but again, if you like the video, please leave a like. Uh, and if you want me to do more content, content like this, consider subscribing. And until then, thanks for watching and goodbye. I do apologize if you're expecting a, to cut to a drone shot Tom Scott style, but I don't have a drone, so enjoy this montage of uh, B-roll footage that we have captured of the line.